centrifugal pumps, material of construction for pump is specified on the pump data sheet. This could be a potential exam question where you can find the material of construction of pump as in data sheet. Inspection test plan specifies what level of inspection as well as the type and extent of examination and test required. The vendor ITP or inspection test plan should address all activities required for manufacturing, inspection, assembly, test, and shipment. The vendor develops the ITP based on job requirements as is specified in the data sheet. The inspection requirement form, technical note, a specification, and applicable industry standards such as API 610 or ASM. Each activity within ITP has a quality control document or procedure on how to do the test and examination. Verifying documents such as test and examination report or as built drawing, reference codes, and also the intervention status of relevant parties, supplier, sub supplier, third party inspection, author inspection, and the client purchaser. And drawing record, BDDR, list the document that supplier is required to submit to the purchaser for review and approval or for information. The ITP and BDDR are mutually agreed between the pump purchaser and the vendor. Bill of materials, BOM, is a list of all parts, their size, type of material, and part number. The pump cross-section drawing and bill of material are reviewed and approved for construction, AFC, by purchaser, requisition engineer. NDT procedures, PMI procedures, WPS, hydro, and performance test procedure submitted by the vendor according to an approved VDDR for purchaser review, approval, or for information only as agreed. Weld and cast repair also need to be approved. Vendor votes and buyouts for major parts or suborders. Copies of bought out items and components from sub supplier is normally checked by the inspector or submitted to the purchaser for information only. These bought out items may be pump pressure casing, impeller, diffuser, shafts, wear rings, sleeves, bushings, well fabrication, pressure bolting, and gaskets. Material certificates for pressure containing parts shall include chemical analysis and mechanical properties from the same heat number. That is, all pressure parts are always EN 10204 3.1 type of certificate. So 3.1 type. While for non-pressure containing parts, normally a material certificate including chemical analysis and mechanical properties not necessarily from the same heat number would suffice. So non-pressure containing parts 2.2 type of certificate and pressure containing is 3.1 type of certificate. The source inspector should always request that the final part number and assembly number are added to the material certificate. Uh, material certificate should be easily legible and vendor should submit all PMI, NDT and other material test procedure listed on the purchaser's VDDR for his review and or approval. Acceptance criteria for various NDEs can be found in ASME Section 8. PMI and NDT reports. The source inspector should ensure that PMI and NDT reports are approved by the purchaser. PMI and NDT test reports should be traceable to the relevant components, while ND equipment calibration certificate should be valid. Design and construction standards or rotating equipments are subject to balancing. Generally, impellers are balanced individually, while rotors are balanced as assemblies with shafts, sleeves, and impellers mounted. All equipment, pump, motor, coupling is usually installed on a single base plate. Here you can see the motor and the pump. There is a coupling here between them. Vertically suspended pumps are typically supplied with a sole plate. So this is called sole plate and this is uh, hanging over. 
with vertically mounted or overhang pumps. These are normally small pumps, centrifugal pumps used for utilities. Material of construction pump components, uh, pressure casing may be subjected to ND examination. Inspection class one specifies minimum requirements, while inspection class three is the most stringent. Casting, forging, bell fabrication, or combination of any of the three are the manufacturing methods for producing a pressure casing. Each of these methods involves certain inspection and tests as specified in the data sheet and a quality plan. Cast casing, single stage overhang pump. Casting quality can be affected by considerable variation in material processing. Casting can be subject to areas of shrinkage, gas porosity, hot tears, sand inclusions, improper well repair, etc. In the methods such as magnetic particle, liquid penetrant, radiographic, and ultrasonic examination are the most frequently performed at the casting foundry. Casting should be heat treated in accordance with material specification before rough machining and hydrostatic testing. Final machine surface are subject to examination. Non-destructive examination are performed to ensure that casting is free from porosity. Cavities and other surface or internal defects and ready for final machining. Any defects that found at the foundry may either be fixed by approved well repair or the casting scrap and recast if well repair is not accepted. Here you see a case single centrifugal compressor with a one piece cast that machined, drilled, and ready for assembly. Centrifugal casting. Centrifugal casting is considered a prefer preferable way of casting. Round shapes such as multi-stage pump casting, casings, casing cover, nozzles, and bearing brackets. This method uses centrifugal force to force voids and gases out of the molten metal. So uh, here, once it's poured, um, it's turned around like centrifugally so that, you know, there is no shrinkage, there is no gas porosity, that sort of thing. It's uh, practically gives you a, almost a uniform structure. Uh, forging is a manufacturing process that involves shaping of metal using localized compressive forces. Because the forging process involves a hot metal forming, forging rarely produces such difficult porosities, blow holes or gas holes. Due to possibility of uneven cooling, forging may produce may surface cracking and or lamination. Therefore, NDT metals such as ultrasonic, magnetic particle or liquid penetrant are the most common tests used for forged parts. And they are used for impellers and rotors, um, forging, whereas the casing most of the time is done by casting. See a multi stage turbine. Fabrication. Forged or cast section may be welded with forged or cast suction and discharge nozzles. An RT or UT test is typically required for the nozzle belt attachment before a part can be sent for rough machining. After the rough machining process, MT or PLP for liquid penetrant inspection. Uh, should be done on the machine surfaces. The next operation is a well attachment of auxiliary connections such as drains and bonds. Connection wells are subject to RT, MP or LP tests before the part can be sent for heat treatment and final machining. Suction pumps have a barrel that is generally fabricated from standard pipes and plates. Top covers will be dimensionally inspected for flatness. Hydrostat testing of the case can be performed uh, after all welding inspection have been completed. The casting process should be capable of uh, producing the surface finishes specified on an engineering drawing or in the purchase order. Here you can see the surface finish. It's, uh, you 
up to select uh, the one that is closest to the casting and that would show the surface finished of the casting. Casting should not show discontinuities that exceed the limits as per as in section 8. So the roughness is shown here, 600, 120, 200, etc. Hydrostatic foam casing. The source inspector should verify the part number of the item subject to hydro test. Casting casing part numbers need to be stamped on the outer surface. The fluid temperature for testing shall be higher than casing material transition temperature from ductile to brittle fracture. API 16 also requires that wetting agents being added to the testing liquid with the specific gravity less than 0.7. All right, content of liquids used to test should not exceed 50 ppm for austenitic stainless steel and pressure gauges used in the test should have current calibration dates shown on the permanently attached tags. The hydrostatic test should be considered satisfactory if neither leaks nor seepage through the pressure containing parts and joints occur within 30 minutes or as defined by the approved hydro test procedure. We call uh, pump casing, the whole thing is being, as you can see the flange is blinded, the tubing uh, cable done to, to pressurize the casing, it's all bolted up. Impellers and diffusers are typically made of castings. Investment casting produces better dimensional and surface quality, quality but is more expensive than sand casting. As you can see here, we've done, um, the rotor normally done by forging and uh, the impeller is normally done by, made by casting. And investment casting is the best of all in terms of quality, but it's more expensive. Visual inspection of impellers and diffusers are first done at the foundry level, then MT or PT examination are performed on the final machine surface. In addition, impellers are balanced dynamically. So, Shafts, bearings, sleeves, bushings, and truss bearing drums. Generally, these parts are machined from bar stock. Shafts of large multi stage pumps are often examined by the UT method. So you can see there is a shaft and rotor here. Earrings. Pump rotors. Uh, a pump rotor is a major sub assembly, should be dynamically balanced. Residual unbalance is the amount of unbalance remaining in the motor. Rotor after balancing. The recommended method of determining the residual unbalance is to test the rotor with a unknown, with a known amount of unbalance. Rotor assembly consists of impellers, shafts, interstage sleeves, uh, truss, balance drums, etc. As you can see, impellers are here. They assemble on the uh, rotor. Machine seals for centrifugal pumps. Uh, API 682 seal is a cartridge consisting of a gland, one or more uh, primary and mating faces, a drive mechanism, four rings, and a shaft sleeve. The pump vendor and seal vendor collaborate for proper seal design and material selection. The seal vendor should prepare and submit for review and approval. The seal cross sectional drawing with detailed BOM for the uh, bill of material and all dimensions that are required to check the seal design and proper fit to the pump. All documents should be listed on the purchaser's VDDR. Some seals are not designed to run on water. In this situation, the vendor shall supply a test seal for the performance test of the pump. Mechanical seal should not be installed during the prime hydrostatic test, but should be used during the running or performance test. If seals are removed from the pump after the performance test, 
for any reason such as fixing a leak or installing contraxid, the seal should be air tested. And see a seal on a pump. Seal. There are two basic designs of mechanical seal, single seal and dual seal. Seal flush, piping and uh, excessive mechanical seal need to be lubricated and cooled for successful operation. This is achieved by providing flush liquid across the stationary and rotating sealing rings. Pumps and seal vendors have to submit drawings, schematics, data sheets and bill of material for piping equipment and instrumentation for purchase review and approval. All these documents should be available during the final inspection. As you can see here, uh, this is a singular double seal, the air pressure uh, using the actually the gas of the process fluid, pressurizing it, depressurizing it. So when it's stationary, there's the inlet and outlet and Typically, a uh, user typically have inspection requirement for auxiliary piping tubing, inspect smooth bends and properly sloped tubing and welded connections, uh, pump drivers and gears, pumps and compressor driven by electric motor, gas or steam turbines or diesel engines. When the speed of the pump is different from the speed of the driver, a gear is used for synchronization. In most cases, Pumps and drivers are installed on the same base plates. Gear purpose, general purpose gear units should confirm to API 677. It shows a schematic of gears, internal gears. This shows a coupling and guards and should be to stand like 200 pounds according to standard the weight on top of it. That's the weight of a human being in case is safeguarding the coupling. This is a guard for the coupling that safeguard it from any uh, external load or pressure. Base plate, mounting plates and sole plates. This is hold down bolt. And this is a mounting plate. And there is a ratchet to adjust the whole thing. Uh, Inspection of base plate involves visual inspection of all welds to make sure that welds are continuous and of good quality. Dimensional inspection, uh, bolt hole, anchor bolt location, and machine pedestal flatness check. This is another pump on the base plate. Uh, these are the like leveling gauge. Level it. Uh, liquid oil pumping, piping, if uh, forced lubrication is required for one or more of the components of the pump, the pump supplier typically provides the oil piping to connect the pump tray, train and the lube oil system. This is a typical lube oil system and shaft sealing and oil control system and auxiliaries and should be um, manufactured according to API 615. Um, the pump vendor should provide for purchase review and approval. A detailed drawing with bill of material showing all parts, instrumentation, gaskets, fasteners, and used for lube oil piping. So there is a tank of for oil, the pumps, auxiliary pumps, and the piping system. Where this is actually works as like a radiator for the whole pump. So for use for big pumps or turbines. Uh, so this is like a radiator for them, the main engine. Cooling water piping, cooling and water piping subject to hydrostatic test at one and a half times of maximum operating pressure. Instrumentation, the source inspector should verify that all instruments, panel boards, junction and terminal boxes, wiring, etc. are in full compliance with the job specification and conform to classification. Each instrument should have an um, sign tag number, the source inspector should verify that all instrument boxes and uh, wires have proper tagging. 
as shown in accompanying documents. All instruments should have a manufacturing nameplate with at least a serial number, area classification, and latest calibration date listed. Pump performance mechanical run test. Pump data sheet specify process data such as rated flow, rated total differential head, net positive suction head 3, net positive suction head absolute. Based on these requirements, the vendor selects and submits a proposal for a pump that's best suited for the application. The purpose of pump performance test is to confirm that the pump performance is as specified on the purchase order and data, pump data sheet to check for pump variations, vibrations, and to check MPSH3 and run the pump to ensure bearing temperature stabilization. This pump performance a mechanical run test procedure may include detailed information such as pump startup, measurement schematic, instruments being used, and most recent calibration, test results collection, interpretation, and final presentation in the form of numerical tables, performance curve, um, vibration reading, uh, bearing temperature or oil temperature versus time, final visual inspection of oil and hydrodynamic bearing, recording of collected data, a sample of the test result curve can be seen as below. And uh, this is again, uh, uh, you can see the head power flow and versus this. So you can see here, um, that is in the actual, um, the actual document that you can see. And this is, uh, shows the pump how that is set up like you got a tank got a pressure gauge here and then another pressure gauge so the in inlet and outlet there are two pressure gauge so valve is another valve and uh, so and the flow meter so flow and head it tells you the pressure shows the head flow and then the inlet flow and then this gauge minus this pressure gauge is the differential head or the distance it can throw the liquid. Performance test setup shall include piping loop that also includes suction tank, suction pressure control valve such as vacuum pump and pressurized suction tank, discharge piping with discharge pressure control valve, minimum flow bypass and uh, calibrated shop or job motor coupling with torque meter, test stand machine monitor system as agreed performance collecting instruments such as pressure transmitters flow meters bolts pumps etc uh, pump flow rate the common unit are meter cube per hour in metric units and this is a flow meter instruments for flow measurements are turbine electromagnetic venturi pi etot ultrasonic positive displacement meter this is a typical flow meter that shows how it's done and uh, tdh total differential head difference between pump suction pressure and pump discharge pressure converted to a static pressure head so as you can see here suction pressure discharge pressure so that will be the total differential head and uh, head, uh, the pressure actually uh, is converted into uh, the, the height or the head. Uh, friction loss is accounted for loss due to friction. So if there is no friction, the total head would be more than when there is a friction. And it's unavoidable. Conversion is necessary to exclude a specific gravity. For example, if test water has a specific gravity of 1, an actual liquid that's pumped has a specific gravity of 0.5. The pump will have the same total differential head regardless of fluid pump, but the dif differential pressure created by the pump when operating water will be twice as much as high as when operating on liquid with SG 0.5. Conducting the test, vendor personnel uh, shall start the pump and bring the flow to the rated point. Uh, they let the pump run briefly to establish a stable flow and monitor pump parameters to ensure that all equipment is operated properly. 
able suction pressure shall be maintained at each point.